Welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy, and that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their diligent service to the gospel truth. It's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I am praying on your behalf as participant observers. And it's my prayer that God will bless you and your family members with all of those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I am encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer. And it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And so, again, this evening, we will be dealing with our Memphis lectures. But before we get into the speaker, I do have a couple of announcements. I want to remind those of you uh, who participate in the fourth Sunday singing that uh, as of July, the uh, fourth Sunday singing will be held at the West Oakland Church of Christ at 1031 12th Street in the city of Oakland. And then in August, it will be at the East Oakland Church of Christ, located at 7811 International Boulevard in Oakland. And then uh, September, it will be at the San Pablo Avenue Church of Christ, located at 3354 San Pablo Avenue in the city of Oakland. And I uh, just want to remind you that during our Black History uh, presentation, we had an interview with Attorney Hiawatha Robertson. I received some questions regarding uh, the contact. So I'm going to be giving out that information and we'll be giving you a crawl roll. So if you're having some problems with uh, the Alameda County uh, Probate uh, Department, then of course you want to call Maxine Ushery, and she's a part of the Pulse News Group in Oakland. And of course, some of you, of course, you'd have to be my age in order to know this, but her better half is Will Ushery. And some of you may remember, again, I say you have to be my age in order to know that. But uh, when there was a radio station, KDIA, Lucky 13, you might remember that. Well, Will Ushery hosted the Black Montage each Sunday afternoon. So anyway, we know that we're working with some good folks. So to call them, 510-287-5200, uh, 510-287-5200. Also, uh, I did tell you the time before that there's a gospel meeting coming up in Pittsburgh. And praise God from whom all blessings flow. You are invited to the third annual tent revival held at the Church of Christ at 283 Diane Avenue, Pittsburgh, California, 945. Six, five. The theme is Blessed Be the Ties That Bind from Colossians, the third chapter, and verses number 14. And the nightly uh, schedule of events will be Sunday, May the 21st, uh, at 4.30, following the fourth Sunday singing. Uh, this first speaker will be Brother James Walker, Jr., then on Monday, May the 22nd, at 7 p.m., there'll be Brother Bruce Nash, and then on Tuesday, May the 23rd, uh, will be Brother Aaron Harris. And then finally on Wednesday, the 24th, will be featuring Brother Jack Wooling. Also, uh, the Diane Avenue Church of Christ presents their 8th Annual Men's Lectureship and the, uh, the Preacher's Leaders Meeting. And that's going to be on Saturday, May the 20th at, 20, at, say, at 10 o'clock. So 
you might be able to go over and get that. And then also coming up in uh, the month of June, uh, June the 12th through the 16th, a gospel meeting will be held over at the Pittsburgh Church of Christ, located at 99 Mountain uh, View Drive in Bay Point. And they will be featuring speakers, brother, uh, on the 12th will be brother John Wood. And then on the 13th, brother Lee Esther Bus uh, Busby. On the 14th, uh, Brother Alan Jackson, and then on the 15th, Brother Ray Brown. You know what? I'm going to have to give that to you again. The speakers, the first one is on the 12th. That's John Wood. On the 13th, Brother Lee Astor Busby. 14th, yours truly, Brother Alan Jackson, uh, and then Brother Ray Brown on the 16th. Uh, then there's Brother Gary Green. So anyway... The theme for that is, is the Church of Christ relevant in today's society? Let me let you know that when you go over to these various gospel meetings, that they don't take up a collection and there's no offering. So don't feel as if you could go. You would like to go, but you don't have any money. There's no money. They don't lift any offerings. That's at those other denominations. So please go out and receive God's holy and divine word. So this evening, uh, as we continue with our uh, Memphis Lectures. Tonight, we're going to be featuring Brother Cornell Johnson, and he's out of Moss Point, Mississippi. And his subject is entitled, Where is Your Towel? And that's coming from John, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 5. So without any further remarks, Brother Cornell Johnson. Give it honor, first of all, to the good God of heaven, who does all things extremely well. Secondly, to the great head of the church, Christ Jesus. And thirdly, to our comforter, the Holy Spirit. I thought Brother Holly was my friend. <laughs> And then I saw the program and saw that he put me behind Jeremy Flowers. <laughs> I feel like a piece of meat right now. <laughs> I mean, before Marcus Watkins and Lord have mercy, Christopher Dardo. <laughs> this is not a good spot to be. <laughs> And the other thing is, I'm about to free. Warm him up, Holy Spirit. Let me get it and quit it. And get on out to let y'all stay spiritual, man. John chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. A few years ago, I didn't need these. So like, the, like the old folk would say, I can't see without them, but praise God, I can't see with them. All right. Amen. Verses 1 through 5. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour has come, he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world. He loved them unto the end. And suffer being ended. The devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he rises from supper, laid aside his garment, 
took a towel and girded himself. Yeah. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet yeah. and to wipe them with a towel where he, wherewith he was girded. The subject that has been assigned to me is, where is your towel? I've got a question. What do you call a chicken crossing the road? Yeah. Call it poultry in motion. What do you call a boomerang that doesn't work? All right. Call it a steak. What do you call four bullfight the bullfighters in quicksand? Quattro Cinco. What do you call a Christian who is a servant? A contradiction. One of the most intriguing characters in the New Testament is a man by the name of Epaphroditus. His story is found in Philippians 2, verses 25 through 30. Epaphroditus is interesting because he was a rare individual. Epaphroditus is interesting because he was a servant. That text tells us that Epaphroditus served the apostle Paul. In Philippians 2, verse 25, he was sick, but he still had, uh, he still was worried about the Philippians because he knew they worried about him. Paul goes on to tell us that the sickness that Epaphroditus suffered came about because he was a servant. Yeah. Verse 30, Paul says, because for the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. Right, right. The phrase not regarding his life is interesting. It's a gambling term, which I'm sure nobody in here knows anything about gambling. <laughs> It's a gambling term that means to recklessly expose one's life to danger. In gambling terminology, it means to risk everything on one roll of the dice. Epaphroditus willingly placed his life on the line to serve Paul. He gambled everything for Jesus Christ so that the man of God might be served and the church which had sent him to Paul in the first place might be well represented. Uh -huh. Around 250 AD, a group of early Christians around ancient Carthage <coughs> called themselves Gamblers. <laughs> they named themselves after Epaphroditus. These people went into the city of Carthage during the height of the plagues when bodies were stacked high along the streets and carried the dead outside of the city and buried them. They risked their very lives to serve the citizens of Carthage, many of whom hated them because they were Christians. Where did Christians like Epaphroditus and the gamblers get their desire to serve others? After all, it's not a natural desire. Because a whole lot of us have the attitude that we ought to be served instead of serving somebody else. But I believe they got their spirit of selfless service from our Lord Jesus Christ. In this passage before us today, we see the selfless Savior in action. On the eve of his death, Jesus assumes the place of a slave and he serves his disciples. While eating the Passover, Jesus gets up from the table, dons a tile, pours water in a basin, and begins to wash 
the feet of the disciples. Yeah, yeah. When Jesus did this, he took the place of a slave before his men. He took the place of the lowest kind of slave who were called the people of the time. They were called this because it was their job to wash the feet of those who were superior to them. Now I know our mentality because in our mentality, nobody is better than I am. Yeah. Hmm. Jesus did this to call his disciples to become towel people. He wants every person who follows him to be a servant. He wants every person to be a towel person. If we are to achieve that goal in our lives, we must develop a heart for others like that which beats in our master's prayers. We can become a people of the towel. But to do so, we must learn the lessons that Jesus teaches us. And I believe there are three things that I want to give them to you, just in case I don't get a chance to get to them. Because if I don't get a chance to get to them, at least you know I have. All right. <laughs> because you know, if, you know, we don't give three points, you know, you ain't preached. <laughs> but there are three things that we need to consider. First, we must learn from his labor. And then, we must learn from his sacrifice. And then we must learn from his love. Look at his name. When Jesus rose from supper, wrapped a towel around his body, and washed the feet of his disciples, oh, yeah. he was performing an act of selfless service for his life. <laughs> what Jesus did has a lot to teach us about us becoming towel people. Now, several facts present themselves. Washing feet was slaves work. Mm. Yeah. Even Jewish servants could not be forced to wash their master's feet. It was a task reserved for the lowest of Gentile slaves. Sometimes a child would wash a parent's foot. Sometimes a wife may wash the feet of her husband. Sometimes. A friend would wash the feet of a friend in a display of extreme affection. Well. So Jesus took the place of a slave before his disciples. Yeah. He willingly humbles himself to meet the need in somebody else's life. Yeah. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples without being asked to do so. In fact, they were probably shocked when Jesus began to wash their feet. It was a breach of hospitality to fail to wash a guest's feet. The disciples should have been falling all over one another to wash each his feet. But it never entered their minds to serve him. Because all they were considered a concern about was being served themselves. They were all waiting for somebody to serve them. Mm -hmm. Jesus served with no expectation of reward. No one ever said thank you. He did what he did just because he wanted to. Jesus served to others, to others with a willing heart. Verse number five says that Jesus began to wash and to wipe the feet of the disciples. Both of these verbs are in a tense that speaks of continual, ongoing activity. In other words, Jesus kept at the task until the work was complete. He worked until every dirty foot had been cleaned. While Jesus carried the burden of the loss on his heart, his men worried about far more trivial matters. Well, Luke 22, 24 through 30 tells us that they were arguing about who should be the greatest among the disciples. Jesus used this opportunity to teach them what a true servant is all about. Most of us 
are just like the disciples. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there are very few who truly possess a servant's heart. All right. Most are willing to be served, but not many are willing to serve somebody else. Yeah. But like Jesus, we should be willing to serve others regardless of the cost. Yeah. We had a funeral at Moss Point one Sunday, one Saturday, and we had to put some chairs out. So I got out of the pulpit and started helping them with the chairs. Baptist preacher was there. He said, uh, he said, uh, you, you the reverend here?
It tells us why he laid aside the riches of heaven to embrace poverty on earth. It tells us why he died for us on the cross of Calvary. It tells us why he willingly assumed the place of a slave to serve men. It's very simple. Verse 1 tells us that Jesus knew his time when his men was about to eat. Yeah. He knew that he was getting ready to leave. And he knew that he was at the end of his earthly ministry. His heart was filled with love for his men. Mm -hmm. But before he leaves them, he's determined to teach them that they need to have some humility. Yeah. Yeah. Learn how to be humble. Yeah. So many of us are so proud. So many of us walk around with our heads up in the eye, in the, up in the air, like we're all a pack and a bag of chips. But if the truth be told, we ain't all that much. All of us have good. done some wrong. All of us have done some stuff that we don't want nobody else in here to find out about. As a preacher, you have to be careful. Well, I remember when I first started preaching, I used to try to preach to please people. But it didn't take me long to find out that you ain't gonna please us. I don't care what you do. If you preach long, you're trying to get a raise. If you don't preach long, you didn't study. If you dress real good, we're paying you too much. If you don't dress good, you're squandering what we give. If his wife is real friendly, she's too loose. If his wife is not friendly, she's stuck on herself. If he's friendly with the sisters, he's a flirt. If he's friendly with the brothers, you will never please people. So just please God. Yeah.